arise awake or be forever fallen better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven a very good afternoon everyone these thought provoking motivational lines are of course by satan from paradise lost today death reading club members are here with an exciting work which needs no introduction yes it's the greatest epic of english language so are you all ready to see to witness to be bewildered mesmerized and lost with us in reading paradise lost i'm sure you are so let's begin this first book proposes first in brief the whole subject man's disobedience and the loss thereupon of paradise wherein he was placed and touches the prime cause of his fall the serpent or rather satan in the serpent who revolting from god and drawing to his side many legions of angels was by the command of god driven out of heaven with all his crew into this great deep with which action passed over the poem hastes into the midst of things presenting satan and his angels now fallen into hell described here not in the center for heaven and earth may be supposed as yet made yet not made certainly not yet occurs but in a place of utter darkness filthy is called chaos here satan with the angels lying on the burning lake thunderstruck and astonished after a certain space recovers as from confusion calls upon him who next in order and dignity lay by him they confer of the miserable fall satan awakens all his legions who lay till then in the same manner confounded they rise their numbers the array of battle the chief leader's name according to the idols known afterwards in canon and in countries adjoining to these satan directs his speech con uh, comforts them with hope yet of regaining heaven but tells them lastly of a new world a new kind of creature to, to be created according to an ancient prophecy or report in heaven for that angels were long before this visible creation was in opinion of many ancient fathers to find out the truth of this prophecy and what to determine thereon he refers to a full council with his associates sends a pandemonium the place of satan rises suddenly built out of deep the infernal peers there sit in council of man's first disobedience of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death into the world and all our woe with loss of eden till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful seat sing heavenly muse that on the secret top of oreb or of sinai didst inspire that shepherd who first taught the chosen seed in the beginning how the heavens and earth rose out of the chaos or of sion hill delight thee more and siloas brook that flowed passed by the oracle of god i then invoke thy aid to my adventurous song that with no middle flight intent to soar above the onian mount while it pursues things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme and chiefly thou o spirit that dost prefer before all temples the upright heart and pure instruct me for thou knowest thou from the first wast present and with mighty wings outspread dove like sarest brooding on the vast abyss and made us stay pregnant what in me is dark illumine what is low raise and support that to the height of this great argument i may assert eternal providence and justify the ways of god to men say first for heaven hides nothing from thy view nor the deep tract of hell say first what cause moved our grandparents in that happy state favored of heaven so highly to fall off from their creator and transgress his will for one restrained lords of the world beside who first seduced them to that foul revolt 
the infernal serpent. He it was, whose guile stirred up with envy and revenge, deceived the mother of mankind. What time his pride had cast him out from heaven with all his host of rebel angels, by whose aid, aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers, he trusted to have equaled the most high. If he opposed and with ambitious aim against the throne and monarchy of God, raised impious war in heaven and battle proud with vain attempt, him the almighty power hurled headlong flaming from the eternal sky with hideous ruin and confusion down to bottomless perdition dared to dwell in adamantine chains and panel fire who does defy the omnipotent to arms nine times the space that measures day and night to mortal men he with his hurried crew lay vanquished rolling in the fairy gulf confounded though immortal but his doom reserved him to more wrath for now the thought both of lost happiness and lasting pain torments him round he threw his baleful eyes that witnessed huge affliction and dismay mixed with obdurate pride and steadfast hate at once as for us angels can he views the dismal situation waste and wild a dungeon horrible on all sides round as one great furnace flamed yet from those flames no light but rather darkness visible served only to discover sights of woe regions of sorrow doleful shades where peace and rest can never dwell hope never comes that comes to all but torture without end still urges and a fairy deluge fed with ever burning sulfur unconsumed such place eternal justice had prepared for those rebellious here their prison ordained in utter darkness and their portion set as far removed from god and light of heaven as from the sender tries to the utmost pole oh how unlike the place from whence they fell there the companions of his fall overwhelmed with floods and whirlwinds of tempestuous fire he soon discerns and weltering by his side one next himself in power and next in crime long after known in palestine and named Beelzebub. Beelzebub, to whom the arch enemy and thence in heaven called Satan, with bold words breaking the horrid silence thus begun. If though beast he, but oh, how fallen, how changed from him, who in the happy realms of light clothed I with transcendent brightness didst outshine. Myriads though bright, if he whom mutual league, united thoughts and counsels, equal hope and hazard in the glorious enterprise, joined with me once, now mystery hath joined in equal ruin, into what pit thou ceased, from what height fallen, so much the stronger proved with he with his thunder. And till then, who knew the force of those dire arms? Yet not for those, nor, nor what the potent victor in his rage can else inflict. Do I repent or change, though changed in outward luster that fixed mine and high disdain from sense of injured merit? that with the mightiest raised me to contend and to the fierce contention brought along. Innumerable force of spirits armed that durst dislike his reign and me preferring his utmost power with adverse power opposed in dubious battle on the plains of heaven and shook his throne. What though the field be lost, all is not lost, the unconquerable will and study of revenge, immortal heat, and courage never to summit or yield. And what is else not to be overcome? That glory never shall his wrath or might extort from me. To bow and sue for grace with suppliant knee and defy his power, who from the terror of his arms so late doubted his, doubted his empire, that were low indeed, that were an ignominy and shame beneath his downfall, 
since by faith the strength of God and this imperial substance cannot fail. Since through experience of this great event, in arms not worse, in foresight much, ad much advanced, we may with more successful hope resolve. To wage by force or guile eternal war, irreconcilable to our grand foe, who now triumphs and in the excess of joy, soul reigning holds the tyranny of heaven. So spake the apostate angel, though in pain, wanting aloud but racked with deep despair, and him thus answered soon his bold compeer. O prince, O chief of many throned powers that led the embattled seraphim to war, under thy conduct and in dreadful deed, fearless, endangered, heaven's perpetual king, and put to proof his high supremacy, whether upheld by strength or chance or fate, too well I see and drew the dire event, that with sad overthrow and foul defeat hath lost us heaven, and all this mighty host in horrible destruction laid thus low. As far as God's in heavenly essence can perish, for the mind and spirit remains invincible, and vigor soon returns. And to he... all our glory extinct and happy state, he has swallowed up in endless misery. But what if he our conqueror, whom I now, of course, of course, feel almighty, since no less than such could have overpowered such force as ours, have left us this our spirit and strength entire, strongly to suffer and support our pains, that we may no suffice his vengeful ire, or do he mightier service as his thralls, by right of war, whatever his business be, here in the hurt of hell to work in fire, or do his errands in the gloomy deep, what can it then avail, though it we feel strength undiminished to eternal being? To undergo eternal punishment, fair to with speedy words and arch fins deployed, fallen cherub to be weak in miserable doing or suffering, but of this be sure, to do aught good never will be our task. But ever to do ill our soul delight. As being the contrary to his high will, whom we resist, if then his providence out of our evil seek to bring forth good, our labor must be to pervert that end, and out of good still to find means of evil, which oft times may succeed, so as perhaps shall grieve him. If I fail not, and disturb his inmost counsels from their destined aim. But see the angry victor hath recalled his ministers of vengeance and pursuit back to the gates of heaven and the sulfurious hail shot, uh, shot after us in storm overblown hath laid the fiery surge that from the precipice of heaven received us falling and the thunder winged with the red lightning and impetuous rays, perhaps hath spent his shaft and ceases now to below through the vast and boundless deep. Let us not slip the occasion where they scorn or satiate fury yielded from our foe. Seest thou yon dreary plain, forlorn and wild? Megha? He is speaking. Seest thou your dreary plain, forlorn and wild, the seat of desolation, void of light, save what the glimmering of these livid plains, cast pale and dreadful, thither let us stand, from off the tossing of these fairy waves, there rest if any rest can harbor there, and resembling our afflicted powers. Consult how we may henceforth most offend our enemy, our own loss how repair, how overcome this dreary calamity, what reinforcement we may gain from hope. 
if not what resolution from despair thus sat and talking to his nearest mate with head uplift above the waves and eyes that sparkling blazed his other part beside prone on the flood extended long and large lay floating many a rude in bulgus huge as whom the fables name of monstrous size titanian or earthborn that buried or job grasses or typhoon whom the den by ancient tarsus held or that sea beast leviathan which god of all his works created huge as that swim the ocean stream him happily slumbering on the norway foam the pilot of some small night foundered skiff deemed some island often as seamen tell with fixed anchor in his scaly rind moors by his side under the lee while night invests the sea and wished morn delays so rest out rest out huge in length the ark pian lay chained on the burning lake nor ever then had risen or heaved his head but that the will and high permission of all ruling heaven left him at large to his own dark designs that with reiterated crimes he might heap on himself damnation while he sought evil to others and enraged might see how all his malice served but to bring forth infinite goodness grace and mercy shown on man by him seduced but on himself trouble confusion wrath and vengeance poured forthwith a pride he rears from off the pool his mighty stature on each hand the flames driven backward slop their pointing spires and rolled in billows leave in the midst a horrid wail then with expanded wings he steers his flight aloft incumbent on the dusky air that felt unusual weight till on dry land he lights if it were land that ever burned with solid as the lake with liquid fire and such appeared in hue as when the force of subterranean wind transports a hill torn from pelorus or the shattered side of thundering aetna whose combustible and fueled in trails dense conceiving fire sublimed with mineral fury aid the winds and leave a singed bottom all involved with stench and smoke such resting found the soul of unblessed feet him followed his next mate both glorying to have escaped the stygian flood as gods and by their own recovered strength not by the sufferance of supernal power is this the region this the soil the clime said the lost archangel this the seed that will change for heaven this mournful gloom for that celestial light be it so since he who now is sorrowing can dispose and bid what shall be right for this from him is best whom reason had equaled force had made supreme above the quills farewell happy fields where joy forever dwells hail horrors hail infernal world and thou profounders hell receive thy new possessor one who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time the mind is its own place and itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven what matter where if i be still the same and what i should be all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater here at least we shall be free the almighty had not built here for his envy will not drive us hence here we may reign secure and in my choice to reign is worth ambition though in hell better to reign in hell than serve in heaven but wherefore let let we then our faithful friends the associates and co-partners of our loss lie thus astonished on the oblivious pool and call them not to share with us their part in this unhappy unhappy mansion or once more with rallied arms to try what may be yet regained in heaven or what more lost in hell so satan spake as him 
Beelzebub thus answered, leader of those armies, bright, which but the omnipotent nun could have foiled, if once they hear that voice, their liveliest pledge of hope in fears and dangers, head so off in worst extremes, and on the perilous edge of battle when it's raged, in all assaults their surest, surest signal, they will soon resume new courage and revive, though now they lie groveling and prostrate on yon lake of fire. As we erwhile assounded and amazed, no wonder fall on such a pernicious height. He scarce had ceased when the superior fang was moving toward the shore. His ponderous shield, ethereal temper, massy, large and round, behind him cast the broad circumference hung on his shoulders like the moon, whose orb through optic glass the Tuscan artist views. At evening from the top of his own, or in Valdano, to describe new lands, rivers or mountains in her spotty glow. His spear to equal which the tallest pine hewn on Norwegian hills to be the mast of some great admiral weighed but avant. He walked with no width to support uneasy steps over the burning mark, not like those steps on heaven's azure and the torrid clang smote on him so besides vaulted with fire. Natless he so endured till on the beach of that inflamed sea he stood and called his legions angel forms who lay in trance. Thick as autumnal leaves that strew the brook in Valambrosa, where the Etrurian shades high over arched in bower or scattered sedge afloat when the fierce winds Orion arms hath vexed the Red Sea coast, whose waves overthrew Bucerus and Memphian chivalry, while the perfidious hatred that pursued the sojourners of caution, who beheld from the safe shore their floating carcasses and broken chariot wheels, so thick bestrewn abject and lost they uh, lost they these, covering the flood under amazement of the hideous chains. He called so loud, that all the hollow deep of hell resounded, princes, potentates, warriors, the flowers of heaven, once yours, now lost. If such astonishment as this can seize eternal spirits, or have ye chosen this place after the toil of battle to repose, your weird virtue and the ease you find. To slumber here as in the wheels of heaven, or in this abject posture have ye sworn to adjure the conqueror who now beholds Chirab and Siraf rolling in the flood, with scattered arms and ensigns till Anon, his swift pursuers from heaven gates discern the advantage and descending tread us down, thus drooping or with linked thunderbolts transfix us to the bottom of this gulf. Arise, awake, or be forever fallen. They heard and were abashed, and up they sprung upon the wing, as when men born to watch on duty, sleeping found by whom they dread, rouse and bestead themselves ere well awake. Nor did they perceive this evil, the evil plight in which they were, or the fears faint nor fell, not feel. Yet to the general's voice they soon obeyed innumerable, as when the potent rod of Amram's son in Egypt evil day waved round the coast up called a pitchy cloud of locusts rapping on the stone mint though over the realm of empires pharaoh hung like night and darkened all the land of nile so numberless were those bad angels seen hovering on wing under the cope of hell fixed upper nether and surrounding fires Till as a signal given, the uplifted spear of their great sultan waving to direct their oppose 
in even balance down the light on the firm brimstone and fill all the plain, a multitude like which the populous north poured never from her frozen loins to pass rain o'er the Dano. When her barbarous sons came like a deluge on the south and spread beneath Gibraltar to the Libyan sands. Forthwith, from every square turn and each band, the heads and the leaders thither haste, whither stood their great commander, godlike shapes and forms, excelling human priestly dignities and powers that erst in heaven sat on thrones. Though of their names in heavenly records now be no memorial, blotted out and raised by their rebellion from the books of life, nor had they yet among the sons of Eve got them new names till wandering over the earth, through God's high sufferance for the trial of man by falsities and lies, the greatest part of mankind they corrupted to forsake God, their creator, and the visible glory of him that made them to transform off to the image of a brute, adorned with gay religion, full of pomp and gold, and devils to adore for deities. Then were they known to men by various names and various idols through the heathen world. Say, muse, their names then known, who first, who last, roused from the slumber on that fiery couch, as their great emperor's call, as next in the world came singly where he stood on the bare strand, while the promiscuous crowd stood yet aloof. The chief were those who from the pit of hell, roaring to seek their prey on earth, dust fix their seeds long after next the seed of God, their altars by his altar, gods adored among the nations round, and dust abide, Jehovah thundering out of Sion, throne, between the cherubim, ye often placed, within his sanctuary itself their shrines, abominations, and with cursed things, his holy rites and Solomon feasts profane, and with their darkness thus affront, affront his light. First Moloch, horrid king, bristled with blood, of human sacrifice and parents' tears, though for the noise of drums and trembles loud, the ch children's cries on her that pass through fire, to his grim idol, his the Ammonites, worshipped in Rava and her wetry plain, in Argo and in Basin, to the stream of utmost unknown, nor content with such audacious neighborhood. The wisest heart of Solomon he laid by fraud to build, his temple right against the temple of God, on that opprobrious hill, and made his grove, the pleasant valley of Hinnom, prophet tents, and black Gehenna called the type of hell. Next, channels the obscene spread of Moab's son. That's all for today. Thank you everyone for being with us. The remaining lines we will bring to you the next Sunday. I hope you all enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get to hear all the great epics of English literature. Thank you once, in a, once again, everyone. I hope you all stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.